Yesterday was a day of water, filled with waterfalls, black sand beaches, a crashed plane, and some of the highest heights that I would reach in Iceland. But today is the day of ice, the largest glacier in Europe, some of the most beautiful mountains, the longest drive of my life. This is day three. As yesterday ended driving a single road in darkness, so too began the morning of the third day. On this day I wanted to see mountains and we had a tour booked for the Glacier Lagoon. We had woken up early at 5am to be precise because I wanted to go to the most eastern point I would travel to in Iceland. It was a two hour drive out there and another 45 minutes to get back to the Glacier Lagoon where we had booked our tour. Today would consist of a lot of driving, specifically six and a half hours to take us from our starting position at Lake Borger Guesthouse all the way to Festival horn and then to our final destination which was Stratka Hotel in Hella. Again it was a photography paradise from the moment we left. It was without a doubt one of the best sunrises I got the experience even if it was just in a car and seeing silhouetted power lines on an orange blue backdrop, glowing white capped peaks of dark silhouetted mountains it was simply phenomenal. Given the fact it was so early and not another soul it was in sight for miles I stopped and took the opportunity to take some of the glorious photos, which I'll let speak for themselves. The journey continued and light began to creep back into the world. One of the most beautiful sights was the Glacier Lagoon in the morning blue hour that just illuminated the icebergs in such a magical light. I would have stopped to have grabbed some photos, but being on a tight time frame and knowing I would have been back there later on in the day, I just had to make sure that I reached Vesterhorn and got back in time. The driving was phenomenal. Driving towards big massive mountains set off in the distance and still set off in the distance 10 minutes later until they were just upon you suddenly. We eventually reached Vesterhorn and a low timing and a bit of confusion from myself meant that I didn't get down to Stokenes Beach to get the best landscape photos. I still got some fantastic photos of the mountains I've always wanted to capture, as well as some phenomenal sunrise photos illuminating back to where we had just been, as well as getting to see a fantastic sunrise and some cool whale bones and then asking the best question of my life before flying the drone and getting ready for the journey back to the Glacier Lagoon. You might think driving out there just for a mountain was a waste of time, but it was truly a fantastic experience and I wouldn't have traded it. The drive back itself was even a treat because now you got to enjoy everything in a new light, see what you had missed on the way out, and again the road was still fantastic to drive and there was no issues. It was also the first time that I had to refuel the duster as well, which also blew my mind given the time and distance I had been driving since day one. Alas, we finally got back to the Glacier Lagoon of Yukulsarlung, and let me tell you, this place was incredible. Got to see an iceberg break and flip, which was really out of this world. The sound of it cracking and splashing into the ocean was crazy. Sadly, I'd only just gotten out of the restrooms whenever I heard the massive crack and I'd only caught the tail end of it. Otherwise, it would have made for a fantastic video and some great pictures. Our tour time was almost ready, but this is where a tad bit of misfortune came into it. We were told icebergs and ice were blocking the path for the amphibian boat to get out, and they told us to come back in 40 minutes. So, took the opportunity to take a few photos around the lagoon, and then walked under the big massive single cross bridge to Diamond Beach, so called because that the ice that breaks from the glacier then floats out to sea and then breaks into these smaller chunks and then washes back ashore. If you didn't stop at the black sand beach, this is another opportunity to stop on a black sand beach. Again, I ate some of the ice, which was quite nice, took some photos and then went back to the booth to ask about our tour. This time we were told that the winds were too strong for us to venture out into the lagoon and the choice was to either cancel and get a refund or wait a bit longer. Thankfully, because we were self-driving ourselves, we just waited a bit longer. The unfortunate thing is, had I have known about these delays, then I could have spent longer at Vesterhorn, got down onto the beach and visited the Viking settlement village they had built for the movie The Northman, a cracking film which I highly recommend. Eventually, third time was the charm and we were allowed to cast off in the amphibian boat. It was really cool to get out into the lagoon and get closer to the magical icebergs that I've been watching and photographing from the shore. The tour was great and informative, but be sure to get seated on the right hand side of the boat as this is the side that gets you closer to the action and lets 
actually have the best views whenever you're allowed to stand up and walk about the tiny deck space. Again, this gave me the opportunity to capture a few fantastic photos and just show how blue these icebergs truly are. After that, we bid the glacier and the lagoon farewell and began the journey back to Hella. It was a pleasant enough drive, with a stop off in Vic to grab some water and use the restrooms in a local shopping centre, before doing the final push to Stratka before nightfall. This time I actually got there with a good few hours of daylight left. Stratka was a lovely hotel from where it was situated to the amenities it had. It had a lovely hot tub and spa area with saunas that we availed off later in the night watching the clear night sky. The only night the sky was actually clear. We also chose Stratka for a different reason as well. It has what they call an aurora alarm which will alert guests as to when the northern lights were out. This again was something that I had been desperate to photograph and see with the naked eye. I'd been hopeful to going to Iceland but I knew that most people do miss them or see them on their last night before travelling home. And I was very curious as to how the aurora alarm would work as I assumed some guests would not want to be woken up uh, by an alarm in the middle of the night if the northern lights are out. But it was quite a clever service. There's a phone in the room and you dial a number on that that would call you if the lights were visible. So it's just like a wake up alarm. So I must have rang the number about three times just in the hopes that it would happen this night. So after finishing up in the hot tubs and ringing the number one last time, we got ready for bed and went to sleep without a northern light in the sky, which was unfortunate. I'd only just got over to sleep. I can't tell how much time had passed, but it must have been about two hours. And that was when I was jolted awake by the phone ringing. I quickly rushed over, picked up the phone and heard the little automated voice saying the northern lights are visible and my heart started rushing. I couldn't believe it was happening. I went outside with my camera and looked up into the sky and saw nothing but a faint wispy grey cloud quite high up. I stood there for several minutes looking, just trying to attune my eye to the night sky but still I could not see anything until I brought my camera up and my heart actually skipped a beat. That grey wispy cloud I was seeing was the northern lights. I cheered out aloud and began to take some photos and the lights began to get better and better with time, becoming a full-blown Aurora Borealis of uh, light show of green and faint purples in the sky. I did get some lovely photos but sadly the video footage only shows sort of part of it. But it was an incredible experience nonetheless for at least a solid hour before my hands were frozen and the coldness of the air had uh, drained the camera battery. And with that, I had returned to bed. In reflection, day three was about very specific and magical moments, something that has continued throughout this journey. It certainly wasn't as jam-packed as day two, but it did have those special moments that outweighed and compared to day two. I was very thankful to see the Vesterhorn Mountains, very thankful to get on the Glacier Boat Tour, and very, very thankful to have seen the Northern Lights. Join us next time for the famous Golden Ring in Iceland. As always, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like, comment and subscribe down below and I shall catch you in the next one.